Now, I've heard the name Throne and Liberty pop up in my conversations recently, and it keeps being compared to Ashes of Creation. Well, I've since delved into every wiki, article, and video, most of which were in Korean, that I could find in hopes of figuring out what exactly this MMO is. Throne and Liberty is being developed by NCSoft, the company behind the popular Lineage 2. Lineage being the game that the Ashes of Creation developers have drawn a lot of inspiration from. And that won't be the end of the similarities between these two games. The game was originally announced in 2011 as Lineage Eternal, a sequel to the original 1998 Lineage and was a top-down game similar to Diablo. Fast forward to 2022 and we now have this an MMO completely revamped and disconnected from the Lydians universe. Now all of this looks pretty, but what exactly is Throne and Liberty, and why should you care? Well... The story revolves around Khazar, the Wraith of Conquest, who has been sealed for centuries inside the Sword of Conquest. He's been revived and doing evil bad guy things as he desires to possess all the fragments of the... Star of Syllabus? Syllabus? Syllabus. Syllabus. <laughs> An ancient object with absolute power. Wow. Now it is an MMO, so it will have the normal PvE, PvP, crafting, though I did struggle to find much information on crafting. Although, they have stated that the game will not have the Holy Trinity of Classes, Tank, Healer, and DPS. Instead, the players equip weapons, and that will determine your playstyle. I imagine that's very similar to Guild Wars 2, for those of you who have played that. It looks like the combat will be very action-packed, similar to Blade and Soul, which is another NCSoft game released in 2012. Now, the fundamentals of this game are all focused on three main pillars. The world, the environment, and the players. As in... These will be the three biggest things that drive the experiences you have in this game. Does that sound familiar? The devs have stated that they wanted to have conditions make the playfield less monotonous, meaning things like terrain changes, new mobs, even the wind, will all affect how combat flows and how it works. Sound familiar? For instance, if you use lightning bolt when it's sunny outside, it might just hit one character. But if you were to use that same spell in the rain, it will then become an AoE ability. If you're shooting a bow, the wind will affect the range and the direction of your abilities, and even the mechanics of the game change. If you're in a siege and you want to infiltrate the castle via the sewers, but it's been raining, they might be flooded and inaccessible, so you'll have to find another way around. Now all of this sounds great, if not difficult to balance. Combat is also meant to feel different, depending on if it's a one-on-one, -on -one, more of a dual kind of think before you act, rock, paper, scissors type game, uh, whether it's group battles or boss battles. The developers have decided that people are far more interested in challenging and interesting story and PvE content rather than PvP content. And so they focused on creating challenging PvE content that will require players to collaborate and work on together in order to progress. Now that isn't to say that PvP won't be in the game. This is an NCSoft title after all. We know there will be your normal open world PvP and your large scale castle sieges where we get to use these pretty sick monstrous siege creatures. Now something unique to Throne and Liberty is their take on PvP called Evil Deeds. This is their corruption mechanic to dissuade griefing and keep the game from turning into a large battle royale. Sound familiar? However, at night players will not generate any corruption, so the world will be a whole lot more dangerous at night. Now we don't know many specifics about this, or about the day-night cycle yet, but this could be a tipping point for lots of people to avoid this game altogether. We'll have to see. Now there are a few mechanics that are going to be unique to Throne in Liberty, namely in their movement. This game has a hurdle mechanic similar to like an Assassin's Creed title, where you hop over small objects in your way as you run up to them. They have a grapple hook similar to Sekiro, and a unique travel mechanic where the players turn into animals and traverse the world that way. This will include land, sea, and sky animals, and looks like it will be taking the place of what would normally be your mounts in any other game. I know there's plenty of people who love mounts and MMOs, and they might not be happy to hear that collecting them won't be a large part of this game. Now last but not least is a 
pretty interesting twist to this game that I don't think I've ever seen before. This game will share the same worldview with a sibling game that's for now just being called Project E. They will take place in the same world but on different continents. Throne and Liberty being a western influence land with knights and castles, Project E being eastern influence with samurai and ronin etc etc. The plan is to use in-game events to tie these two games together and make them two sides of the same coin where one affects how the other's events unfold. And while this does sound very interesting in concept, I do wonder how relying on another game to keep the story progressing could negatively affect the health of the game in the long run. If one game is more popular than the other, is it going to start to suffer because the sister game isn't keeping up? We'll have to see how this plays out. Now there are a couple concerns. This game has had one hell of a long development cycle, and the question that most people are asking is, are the mechanics and technical aspects to the game going to stand up after 11 years in development? Well they should. See in the middle of development, when the game was still Lineage 3, they took a step back from what at the time was a game very similar to Lost Ark or Diablo 3, and decided that that game that they had been creating is not what the players wanted. So they went back to the drawing board and redesigned the game. And what they ended up with is what we just discussed. So if you consider that they all but restarted development, they've actually only been working on this game for about three or four years, which kind of leaves us with the reverse problem. Can you really design an MMO in that short amount of time? Now you have to understand they're not working off of a blank slate because they did have the bare bones of Lineage 3 to work from. But they did redesign many mechanics, ditch some, create some, and remake the story to create something completely separate from the lineage IP. All of which requires a massive amount of work. Additionally, it is NCSoft, and Korean MMOs are notorious for pay-to-win features in their games. Though, pay-to-win might not be the most accurate term. Pay-to-progress would be closer, but it amounts to about the same. Other players will progress much faster by dropping a few bucks than a normal player can get to on their own. Getting farther ahead and better equipped gives those players priority in the world when you're trying to farm for resources or hunt mob packs or do PvP. So it, it gives players priority in just about every aspect of the game and you can do the math from there. The developers have stated that the game will avoid excessive pay to win elements. I think most of us can agree that any pay to win elements is excessive. And the long development cycle that this game has been through means that NCSoft is likely looking to recoup money any way they can. So I suspect that the cash shop will be pretty robust. Throne in Liberty was just delayed to be released in the first half of 2023, and they're in talks with Amazon Games to publish it in the West, which might irritate a few people. Now the question that remains, is Throne in Liberty and Ashes of Creation's killer? Maybe. It might wound it. If Throne in Liberty delivers on what it's promising, I think it will definitely steal a lot of Ashes of Creation's thunder, but not kill it entirely. Ashes of Creation's release date is still a big question mark. The developers are still holding their cards close to their chest as to how far into development they are, and this uncertainty will likely push a lot of players away to other games some who will never return. That being said, Ashes of Creation is still has quite a bit that's unique to it, quite a bit that's unique to the systems, the development team is great, so in that sense, Throne of Liberty is more like Ashes of Creation's cousin, sharing a lot of the same core concepts, but a different flavor. Now that's all I have for today. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, leave a comment, consider subscribing, it really does help me out, and I'll see you guys next time.